So I appreciate all of you for joining. I do say, um, as you're watching me tonight, I always encourage all of my guests to participate and watch, ask questions, and put yourself in my shoes. See if this feels or looks like something you could imagine yourself doing. Um, it's an awesome opportunity to, to get yourself started in business if you love food and you love sharing, if you hate food and you need new ways <laughs> to make it more fun and more delicious. I always challenge all of my guests to uh, take this opportunity to see if you could imagine yourself doing this. Um, like I said, there is always the opportunity as a new consultant to join my classes virtually and learn um, alongside of me. First thing first that we are making tonight is our barbecue chicken pizza and I am going to cheat just a little bit. I'm not actually going to grill the chicken. I'm going to do the chicken in the rectangular steamer and use the Tuscan chicken burger seasoning to flavor it. And then we're going to make barbecue sauce as our base for the pizza and bake them that way. So step one is going to be making the chicken. So I have two breasts already sliced in here just for the sake of time. Yes, they are raw, you can see that. The rectangular steamer, maximum I would cook in here is two breasts. Um, beyond that, you're gonna want to use a bigger steamer. I am um, preparing this and my husband has already said if I need any help with quality assurance in taste testing said barbecue chicken pizzas later, he is more than happy to help. So just so you know, um, he might have to help taste test. So I'm going to add, uh, I'm probably going to do one and a half tablespoons of our Tuscan chicken seasoning here to the um, chicken in there. So it says Tuscan chicken burger. But I am showing you that there are other ways to use this than just making a burger. But you can throw this right into your ground meat. Um, chicken or turkey, they make nice, super juicy burgers. And this has so much flavor in it. We have, um, what are our ingredients in here? Garlic, tomato, onion, sumac. Sumac has lots of health-promoting properties, and I cannot bring them to mind at the very moment. Red bell pepper. Um... Sea salt, black pepper, rosemary, and some proprietary herbs. If you're allergic to something, let me know. I can tell you. But that's it. That's all the ingredients that are in there. You throw this into your raw ground meat. Give it a good squish and squeeze. Um, make your patties. Veronica says it's good on shrimp. It sure is. You can make portobello mushroom burgers if you are vegan. So mix the seasoning with a little bit of avocado oil or um, olive oil. Brush on your portobellos. Let it sit, marinate for a few minutes before you grill them. I mean, if you're Jamie Oliver, you'll probably let them marinate for like six hours. Stab them on some sticks. That was a really awesome video on Instagram a couple weeks ago. And he did like a portobello shawarma. Oh my God, it looked so good. So this would be perfect for that. So it is now on our chicken. I'm going to give it a quick stir just so that we can coat the chicken with the seasoning. And then I'm going to pop it in the microwave because I have two whole breasts in there, two whole chicken boobs. I'm probably going to start with five minutes. I'm, I'm gonna throw the chicken in for about five minutes. And then we are going to get the barbecue sauce ready. So the basic instructions for using the barbecue seasoning to make barbecue sauce is to mix with one cup of ketchup. Uh, we don't eat ketchup in this house because it's disgusting. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of ketchup. I also don't love that it's got like six ingredients that are sugar, um, liquid sugar, corn sugar, more sugar. So we make our own ketchup. I use tomato paste, organic, no salt added, BP, BPA free cans. Yes, that's a thing. Make sure that your tinned tomatoes, especially anything that's acidic that comes in a tin, um, be sure that the tins say right on them that they're BPA free because it, there is a plastic lining inside of most tins and acidic things like tomatoes um, will break down that plastic lining and then you're eating it. So um, that's your culinary nutrition tip for today. So I use a can of paste and then to get the 
sort of sweet flavor that you would expect from ketchup. I use two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, whichever one you like, the dark one. I mean, you can use the white one if you want. It's uh, even sweeter, so there's, a, there's an idea. We don't have the white one on hand right now, so two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. A quarter cup of white vinegar or apple cider vinegar. Again, I have apple cider kicking around here. So that's what gives you the tang. Yes, four tablespoons is a quarter cup. Um, if you would like it a little bit sweeter, and I find for a barbecue sauce, it's nice to have a little bit of sweet, more so than the balsamic vinegar is gonna give you. Use a little bit of pure maple syrup um, or coconut sugar. So about a tablespoon of maple syrup. And then give it a bit of a stir. Um, you can then add as much water as you need. If, if the vinegar isn't enough liquid, add as much water as you need to give it the texture that you would expect for ketchup. Because I'm using this, um, as barbecue sauce for the base on a pizza. I don't really need it much watcherier. I'm just gonna stir in the barbecue seasoning. The barbecue seasoning has alder smoked sea salt and um, smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, garlic. It gives you that nice, rich smoky flavor. I'm going to use two teaspoons to give it that really nice barbecue flavor because that's what we want on our pizza. Stir that in. Try not to make a giant mess, Jessica. Yes, I'm telling myself not to make a mess. Oh, there's our chicken. Pop it in there. going to use this little baby. I love this little spatula. It's nice and skinny so it fits down into lots of tall jars, gets around edges at the bottom of things like your shaker cup when you're making a smoothie. Because it's smaller, it's a great spatula for small things like this measuring cup. Um, and then just stir in that barbecue seasoning until it gives you a nice smoky flavor. I wish there was smell -o vision because that's something everybody misses out on when we're not doing a live cooking class. So there's your barbecue sauce. I'm going to use the larger of our sheet pans, but there, we actually do have two sizes. This is the quarter sheet pan and the quarter sheet pan bacon roll. So I love these things. This is food grade silicone, the same silicone that your steamers are made out of, not plastic. Um, the wonderful thing about silicone is that it is actually the same chemical composition as glass. It is bonded silicone and oxygen. The main difference is how the bonds are put together. So glass, they are bonded into a solid, hard solid. And then silicone, like this, it is a solid, but it is a flexible solid. That's your chemistry slash physics for the day. Um, so there is no fear that you are using a plastic liner. Um, same with the steamers. So the big thing I love to tell people about the steamers, the food grade silicone means that you can cook the food in them and they actually use their own steam to steam the food. And you'll see when I pull the chicken out in a second, there's, you noticed I didn't add anything except the seasoning. There's no added water, there's no added oils. They cook with the juices and fats that are present in the meat or vegetables that you're cooking. Um, if you're not a microwave cook, I am not here to change your opinion about that, but I will tell you the main reason the microwave got a bad rap as a way to cook food is that one, we called it nuking, um, but the radiation is actually less than what's coming off my cell phone right now. Um, and the type of radiation is, it's negligible about how it actually affects the food, except that what it does is superheat the water particles within the food and shake them around. And that's how it cooks. Um, hence the steaming with its own juices. 
what happens is that it reaches very high temperatures very quickly and can cook food at a high temperature for a short period of time. It's actually the best way to cook food, especially vegetables, because it locks in nutrients and you lose less of the good in your food. The main issue that happened in the early 80s and 90s when microwaves started to appear on the scene is that instead of cooking your food in the microwave in things like glass or ceramic, people were cooking things in old margarine containers. Bad plastic. <laughs> and the bad plastic is what was making people sick. Um, and so the microwave got a bad rap because it was what people associated with getting sick and it turns out it's actually the bad plastic that you were ingesting because you cooked your food in an old margarine container. The steamers were designed by our product development team to actually be made out of not plastic and to work with the heat and moisture in your food to cook it quickly and give you the best results. These guys, the liners, are made out of the same silicone. They help keep these pans clean. So the quarter sheet pan here, this one is newer. This one came out um, in January and the liner just came out the 1st of May. So these pans I have been using since January. Um, when we make pizza on them, I oil them and then the dough covers the whole pan. So they're, it's not discolored very much because there's not, not a lot of the pan that has been exposed to the oven. Um, but now because I have these liners, it's always going to stay this clean. We're actually going to use the bigger sheet pan. This is significantly larger than your like baker's secret um, baking sheet. And I love this thing. And this one I've had with the bacon roll for years. And it's still pretty shiny and clean because of the bacon roll. So this covers your pan. And if you see, it's got this really nice lip so that you can do sheet pan dinners in here and all of the oils and fat and all of the delicious things that come out of your food as it's cooking get trapped on the sheet pan with the liner instead of making a giant mess on the pan itself which makes for super easy cleanup and extends the life of your pan because it doesn't get burnt black bits all over it so we are going to put our Nan breads, I'm just using nan breads because they're small and simple and the girls love them and you can make individual size pizzas and they will cook quickly. So I'm going to lay them out on there and I think we can probably fit at least four, maybe six, which works nicely in this house because there are so many of us. Yes, we can make six pizzas, one for each of us which means we will have a delicious lunch tomorrow. So thank you for <laughs> coming to my house while I make tomorrow's lunch. Um, we're going to slather some barbecue sauce on there. And then I'm going to show you the chicken. The girls love um, using the steamers. So that's another thing that I love about them. The kids can use them. Uh, not on their own yet because mine are still pretty young. But... Uh, if you have older kids out there, it makes for them feeling much more independent because they can create all kinds of things fairly simply without having to turn on a burner. Do keep in mind, the food does get hot in there, so um, while you're letting them learn, definitely work with them until they get confident enough in their skills and aware enough of how it works that they don't burn themselves but it does help give kids a significant amount of confidence in their ability to prep food because they are so easy to use and like I said they also make uh, older kids feel confident in the kitchen too if they are moving out on their own for the first time and having to suddenly figure out how to cook it is a great way to give them more confidence because they don't have to worry about burning stuff. I use the multi-purpose steamer, the big one that I showed in the, um, the video with the lasagna earlier this week. Um, I use that when I make pasta, I make quinoa, I make rice, I make a whole chicken in there. You can add grain on the bottom. It comes with a tray that fits inside. You can then add 
protein and veg and cook a whole meal within the steamer all at once. So they're really great options. Um, if you're downsizing and you don't have a huge kitchen, if you are suddenly cooking for less people, the steamers make it really easy. This, the little one that I'm using for the chicken is a great way to make one or two portions, um, hot lunch at work, pop it in the microwave, bring your, your raw stuff in your lunch bag, throw it in the steamer when it's time to eat and cook it fresh instead of just reheating something. So I'm gonna pull the chicken out. It was popping and snapping in there, so I suspect it's close. Again, with, with the two full breasts, sometimes five minutes isn't enough, but it definitely looks like it was enough. So this is our chicken, fully cooked which is super awesome. I'm gonna eat a piece so that you believe me. It's gonna be hot. So there is our fully cooked chicken, five minutes in the steamer. Mm-hmm. I'm actually going to take it out of the steamer. You know what, actually I'm not. I'm gonna leave it in the steamer for a second because I'm gonna show you another one of my favorite tools. The four-in-one mandolin is one of my favorite prep tools. It's four in one because this little uh, hole in the back here, if you push it, your blades come out. There are four of them. So this one is a three and a half millimeter slice. That's what I'm gonna use to slice the onions. There is a one and a half millimeter slice as well. Um, I am throwing things. That's why I'm in my own kitchen, making my own mess. The one and a half millimeter is a super thin slice, so this is great for potato chips and um, scalloped potatoes and making things like beet and uh, zucchini noodles. You can make super thin slices and put them into a lasagna in place of pasta noodles. Um, anything you want a super thin slice, the one and a half millimeter. We are using the three and a half for our onions. I'm gonna pick the one I dropped. So the one I dropped is the micro julienne. This is great for shredding. So if you're shredding apples, carrots, zucchinis, cucumbers for salads, so shred a cucumber and tzatziki sauce and shred a carrot for um, coleslaw. The micro julienne is super fantastic for that. The other blade I'm actually gonna show you is the um, thicker julienne blade. So this one is great for dicing an onion. I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can dice an onion in about 12 seconds with this thing. Um, it also gives you nice long match sticks. So match stick cucumbers and carrots for hand rolled sushi or super thin sliced skinny fries. So sweet potato shoestring fries or regular potato shoestring fries to do baked fries and chicken ranch burgers with your Southern baked um, coating mix. So I love, love, love these. I'm going to actually do the three and a half mil first and slice some onion for you. So I love using this blade to slice up cucumbers and the red onion when I make quick pickles using the quickle pickling mix. Um, I can slice up three red onions, super speed, throw them in the jar, pour the quickles pickling mix, and I have a nice big jar of quick pickled red onions. We throw them on doner, on Greek, on pizzas, into salads, burgers. What do we have them? Oh, tacos. Pickled red onions are kind of like the garnish of life. You can put them on everything. I am going to pop the end off this onion using our ceramic chef knife. They come with a little guard because ceramic is super sharp but not super strong. You wanna keep the blade covered when it's in the drawer so that it doesn't get chipped or pitted or broken. Um, we love ceramic because, one, super sharp. Two, it's not metal. So there is no oxidation reaction between a stainless steel blade and your fruits and veggies. Why do we not want that? Well. Things like lettuce and cabbage, if you cut them with a steel blade, that oxidation reaction leaves the leaves turning brown very quickly and wilting. Um, the oxidation reaction when you cut apples or pears with a steel knife instead of a ceramic knife means that your apples and pears turn brown. Um, yes, this is the thing to use to cut up apples so your children won't complain that they are brown in their lunch boxes. The other awesome thing about a ceramic blade no oxidation reaction, is that when you cut an onion, you won't cry. The acids in the onion do not mix with the stainless steel and create an oxidation reaction, which is actually what makes you cry. So, I'm going to cut the end off the onion. 
and not cry. And then just peel off your skin like you would. But what I do when I'm using the mandolin is actually keep the end bit here. Peel is off and then just leave the end like that. And I use that as a grip. Um, the mandolin does come with a guard. So if you aren't confident, use the guard. I'm not going to slice the whole onion because I don't need that much. So I'm not going to use the guard, but if you were planning to go right to the end of the onion, definitely use the guard. I definitely use the guard for hard things like making shoestring fries or sweet potato fries. Um, even sometimes with an apple if I'm shredding it because I don't want to push too hard and slice myself. So the other fantastical things about this mandolin, it has a nice silicone grip so you get a good grip on there and even with your hands wet it won't slip and it has the same silicone grips on the feet so it can stand on the counter and not slide but it also has this lip here so they hold on to a bowl so if you were shredding cabbage into a bowl for a coleslaw you can hold the edge of the bowl with this I am just going to slice the onions straight down on my cutting mat here so there you go how quick was that perfectly sliced we are going to sprinkle a few of those onto our pizzas because barbecue chicken pizza is not the same without a little bit of red onion um, I'm not huge on them raw which is why I like them quick pickled or on a barbecue chicken pizza but if you love raw red onion say in a salad or on a burger that's where the um this blade the thicker julienne the slice chop blade so this is i'm going to show you this is where you can get your diced onions so if you look at the grain on the onion you want to slice against that grain on this blade and you will get, the skin is a little bit squishy, it's getting stuck. <laughs> Sorry guys. You will get perfectly diced onion. So no skin, we don't want the skin. You get all of these great little pieces of diced onion. I hope you can see that. Uh, all right, so I have my chicken chopped up here. I'm going to sprinkle that on my pizzas. And realistically, they're only going to take about 10 minutes because we just, we're just going to throw them in there long enough to melt the cheese, wilt the onions, heat the sauce up because our chicken is fully cooked. So this is another super time saver if you are a busy household you can have your chicken defrosted so that when it's when it's time in the time it takes to preheat the oven essentially you can cook the chicken get your sauce ready dress up your your dough here your bottoms yes i lost the word the nan breads the, the pizza base whatever you want to call it and by the time your oven is up to temperature, you've got all your condiments ready to go. Throw some cheese on there. Use whatever cheese you like. If you don't eat cheese, use whatever is your preferred alternative. Yes, I'm making a mess. The good news is with the bacon roll mat, the cheese just kind of gets nice and bubbly, but doesn't, um, doesn't burn it just comes right off you can actually that's one of the best parts about this bacon roll mat is that you can eat the uh, nice crispy bubbly cheese bits because they come off the mat so easily so we're gonna throw those in for about 10 minutes I said barbecue chicken pizza and um, Caesar salad so Caesar dressing is one of those ones that most people are familiar with it's pretty straightforward to make it is one of the favorites in this house my children love it there are actually two different recipes on the jar 
No, there are three. There's how to make the Caesar dressing and then how to use it to make Caesar chicken fingers. So prepare the dressing, then dredge your chicken um, cutlets, fingers, peat nuggets, however you want to call them, sorry, um, in the prepared dressing and then dip them in your panko crumbs or your southern baked and bake them. And so you then you have Caesar um, chicken fingers. So what we're actually gonna make is the vinaigrette that I wasn't huge on the creamy one. So the vinaigrette dressing is even easier to make, which makes it also more of a favorite. You literally need equal parts, olive oil and vinegar of choice. I am going to use apple cider vinegar, um, but the white balsamic is also highly recommended in this one because it does have that little bit of sweet. So I have a quarter cup of olive oil in there. I'm gonna throw in a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Our cruet is one of my favorite for super easy sauces and dressings because it already has all of the measurements right on the side. So when making homemade sauces and dressings, you don't need to dirty another measuring cup or your spoons because you can measure your quantities right on the side without having to worry. So a quarter cup of vinegar in there. And then you want two tablespoons of the Caesar dressing mix. We're going to use the funnel. Goes very nicely with our cruet. This is a joke coming. It's gonna make you laugh because it makes everybody laugh. It's not my joke. I don't take credit for coming up with it, but I do take credit for how hilarious it is. Our conference last year, we were in Las Vegas. There were like 1,100 consultants in the crowd. My friend Carrie is an executive director. She is on stage. She is teaching a cooking class live on stage in front of 1,100 consultants. And she says, at my cooking classes, I like to tell my customers how awesome the cruet and the funnel are. Because they go together just like this, just like husband and wife. And the whole crowd <laughs> bust out laughing because sweet little Carrie <laughs> did not realize how awesome that joke was. But it's true. The cruet and the funnel go together like husband and wife. The funnel is the same food grade silicone. It is super flexible so you can see that it's squishable. This is what I love about it because you can then put um, thick and gooey stuff. So like I said when you're making sauces to get that um, tomato paste down into here with a hard plastic funnel would be a nightmare because you'd just be banging it would be a mess where in here you just give it a squeeze squeeze and it pops through. You can actually crack eggs into here so if you're making an omelet or you're camping and you want to crack your eggs in and take them so that Again, if, as long as all you want is scrambled eggs while you're camping. Um, so that they're already in a nice safe container and they're not going to get crushed in your camping kitchen and have all the shells smushed and the eggs go everywhere. You can crack them in here and you just pop, you crack it in and then give it a quick squeeze the yolk through and they will plop, plop, plop and you can fill your cruet with eggs. Um, and then when it comes time to make them into an omelet, you just give them a shake, 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 throw in whatever seasonings and veg, protein, etc. you want, throw them in the pan, scrambled, omelet, bingo, bango, done. So funnel in, we want two tablespoons. Nope, not with that one, it's wet. Don't put a wet tablespoon into your dry mix. Two tablespoons of the Caesar dressing mix right down in there and that is the bones of a Caesar vinaigrette. The piece de resistance when making this one is a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon. So I'm going to show you another tool that I'm a big fan of. We're going to use this again to make my cocktail. The two-in-one citrus press. Two-in-one for fairly obvious reasons, I hope. One, two, lime insert, lemon insert. When you put your citrus in here, you can also, um, if you use smaller sized navel oranges or clementines, uh, tangelos, tangerines, all the small sized oranges, you can also juice oranges with this bad boy. Make sure it is pulp side down and then you give it a squeeze 
and you get all of the super delicious yummy juice out. This press is easy enough to use that even my eight and nine year old can do it. They love using it to make fresh lemonade for a lemonade stand. The lemon is popped inside out. All of the juice has been removed. All the pulp and seeds stay in the press. Waste not, want not. Pop the lid back on. Shake, shake, shake. Fresh made Caesar vinaigrette, ready to go. I do recommend when you're making our dressing mixes, any of them, whether it's Greek balsamic, sesame ginger, Caesar, do try and make them about 10 to 15 minutes before you plan on serving them. The spices in our blends are just spices, actual plants and plant extracts that have been freeze dried. So when you are making marinades and dressings, we suggest at least 10 to 15 minutes before you plan on serving them because the freeze dried seasonings, herbs, spices, etc., have a chance to work with the liquid that you're mixing them with to rehydrate and really bring out the flavor and infuse the flavor into what you're eating. So that's why I suggest about 15 minutes before you serve. Now, the, the best way to kick up your Caesar salad like to the next level, a few cracks of fresh cracked black pepper when you serve. Um, a little bit of fresh Parmesan cheese, if you like. And our better than bacon, uh, pinto bean imitation bacon topper. I have none to show you because it all got eaten in this house last week in scalloped potatoes and I didn't realize and have not had a chance to order more. Um, but that is a great way to just bring your Caesar salad to the next level. The last thing I am gonna share with you guys tonight before I plate my food and bid you adieu and say goodnight is my cocktail. I'm um, a super summery, refreshing summer berry lemonade. I'm probably not going to start for another five seconds because the timer's gonna go, I'm gonna take the peas out. See, just like that. Bingo, bango. Pizza ready in less time than it takes Jessica to jibber jabber. So there are our individual barbecue chicken pizzas. You can't smell how delicious they smell. You won't get to taste how delicious they taste until um, Mano has us all over or Veronica to their homes in, I don't know, December? when the world is open again and we will make them again. Um, but there's our pizzas. Turn this baby off. To make a super summery, refreshing, delicious summer berry lemonade, you need our summer berry sweet dip mix. Our sweet dip mixes are awesome. They contain three grams of organic cane sugar per serving, which is um, a significant step down from what you might normally find in most of your flavored drinks flavored yogurts, flavored instant oatmeal, and flavored pancake mixes. Yes, all of those things are places where I will use this. I will throw this into pancake and waffle batter. I will throw this into um, oatmeal to add some extra flavor for my girls. I will add it to plain Greek yogurt and let them have it as a base in a yogurt parfait or as a dip for fruit. I will add it to, um, what else did I say? Well, my drink. So here we go. I'm gonna use one teaspoon, except I took my teaspoon away. So I'm just gonna use a spoon so that I can stir my cocktail. So one teaspoon of the mix, and I'm actually gonna, I have a feeling that Rachel is out there watching. She loves this one. She says the kids eat this one like out of her hand. So look at all of that deliciousness. That is freeze dried, strawberries and raspberries, summer berries. I'm gonna throw that into my cocktail glass. I'm going to squeeze the other half of my lemon right into the glass. If I was in a cocktail mood, this is where you would add like your measure of vodka or gin. 
I'm not doing a cocktail today, so I'm going to give a little swirl, the lemon juice and the mix, and you can see that the berries are starting to rehydrate. I'm going to add some fizzy water from my soda stream, if you don't have one of those, Perrier, soda water, any kind of fizzy bubs. Another option, speaking of fizzy bubs, would be Prosecco, if you wanted a cocktail. So there is your summer berry lemonade. Where did I put that spoon? Yes, this is, this is the reality in Jessica's kitchen. Where did I put that thing? Give it a good stir, and I will say... Cheers to all of you. Thank you for joining me tonight, for inviting me digitally into your homes, direct from my messy kitchen with my husband anxiously awaiting the prepared pizzas. Um, if there is something that you saw me using tonight that you want to know more of, please feel free to ask questions here in the feed. Send me a direct message. If there is um, something you'd like to know more about, um, this business, what it takes to sign up as a consultant, um, how to get your business launched and off the ground, uh, what's required to stay in business. Um, I always say, I will help you get into business and I can help you get out if it's not for you. And if it does turn out that it's not for you, uh, you can still eat the kit. <laughs> and realistically, what's the worst thing that could happen? You discover some really awesome food that you can share with family and friends. You create a business that you never imagined could be possible. That's kind of how I feel. When I started, we were looking for something to fill the gap in our family income. And this has become something that gives me great joy um, to bring real food into so many hundreds of kitchens across Canada and the US. It gives me even more joy to teach the next generation how to cook. Um, I love that my girls get to be in the kitchen with me and participate and learn and grow. And I absolutely love that it has introduced me to some of the most wonderful people. Again, cheers to you. Thank you for joining me tonight, guys. Have a great night and I will see you again.